And praise God. So good to see those that may be tuning in uh, just now. Tonight we are live on Facebook. Uh, once again, so excited to be in the house of the Lord just to be able to share his word uh, for tonight. My, didn't we have a good service this morning, Brother Perry? Sure did preach. I wish uh, a lot of you could have been here. I know you guys saw it through live stream, but it's a little different when you hear it. It's, uh, I know we're all ready to see everyone, but tonight... I don't plan on keeping you too long. I just want to give what the Lord wants me to say. So I'm going to ask you to pray for me wherever you may find yourself that I may be able to share this word uh, that God has given me. Sometimes it's not so much about what to say, but how to say what he's given you, what, what, what the word is that he's trying to give you. I want to just be able to preach it like I've gotten it. And so just want to encourage you to pray for me wherever you may find yourself. And let's God, ask God to give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying for us tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for bringing us together. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this morning service, God, just to know that you're the shepherd, God, how you lead, you guide us, you direct us, the things that you do for us, God, even when we don't even know that you're working, Lord, we know that you're always working, God. You never slumber, you never sleep. I'm asking you, Lord, to hide me behind the cross, that you would just give me the words to say, God, as you give me this word today for your people, Lord. Help us, Lord, to come out challenged, Lord, and different as a result of hearing what you have to say. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask these things and pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just once again, just want to thank everyone that's here for tuning in. Uh, to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, what I want to share today is not very long, and it's out of uh, a book, out of the book of Luke, and we're going to be reading that here in a minute. But before we get into that, I'm going to want you to turn, if you have your Bibles with you, to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. That's going to be something, just a little side scripture that I want to share. But in this life, there are things still worth fighting for, amen? There's still things that are worth fighting for. To know Christ is one of them. To know Jesus, to be filled with the Spirit, that's something worth fighting for today with all of our heart, soul, and mind to know Christ, to know who He is. And in these last days, it matters who we belong to. In these days that we're living in, it matters whether we belong to Christ or not. We have been called with a purpose. We have been called to be a peculiar people like the Word of God says. And as we see the day approaching, we're the coming of the Lord approaching, we will be sticking out even more and more. Not in a weird way, but the hope, the joy, the love that, that is in us, the Christ, hope of glory, that should be more and more evident. As we know that the light is going to shine brighter in a darker room. The darker the room is going to be, the darker the atmosphere, the darker the place, the brighter the light is going to seem. Why? Because it drives out, it drives away that darkness. So it's, it's, a, it's a necessity for us to go through trials. It's a necessity for us to go through all these things, different tests, whether they come in different forms and different ways, because in the midst of them, Christ wants to make himself manifest. In the midst of them, Christ wants to make himself known for us to better know him and for, and for us to show others what he wants to do through their lives as well. Amen. There is a place where God wants to take us, where our faith graduates from just belief into action. But again, I just want to read out of Jeremiah just real quick before we get into our main part of the scripture. Something that I've been thinking about since last night, just, well, a couple, few days ago, maybe three, three, four days ago, this just thought, this scripture just kept coming to my mind. And this is what it says in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. It says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise love and kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight saith the Lord so it talks about to delight in the Lord to boast basically to boast and to glory in the fact that I know God but not just that I know God but that he knows me throughout this whole situation that we're going through you know riches and fame and money and wealth and all these things had no effect 
on what's taking place. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. But one thing we can glory in and boast in is if we've gotten closer to God or not. God, are you speaking to me still? God, am I closer to you than I've ever been before? That's one of the things that I just so excites me. After this whole thing is over, I, I guess whenever it's over, whenever we can meet again, whenever everything goes to normal, so to speak, and I say, God, I know you more now than I did before this whole thing started. And if I can say that I can glory in that fact that God is doing a work in me and I'm letting that work take place and letting that work take root in me amen praise the Lord as I said that's not the main scripture just something I was just thinking about but I want to go to the book of Luke tonight for our main part the book of Luke we're going to read uh, 10 verses chapter 19 verse 1 through 10 it says and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho and behold there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree, and to see him, for he was to pass that way. Talking about Jesus was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they, say, they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Praise the Lord. In our story just now, what we just read about Zacchaeus, we're presented with him, a man named Zacchaeus, who is known to be little in stature. That means he had a situation. He had a problem, but not just any situation, not just any dilemma or any problem, but this problem, this situation was out of his control. He could not control the circumstances that were taking place. He heard that Jesus was coming that way. He heard about Jesus, how he was going to pass that road, and he thought, I want to see this man. I want to see Jesus. But in that, in doing that, he came across the problem that the Bible says was the press and his stature. He was little in stature, was one, and the press was the other, blocking the way where he could not see. But again, these circumstances, these problems, these dilemmas, whatever you want to label it today, were things that were out of his control. He didn't foresee these things. It was out of his control. There was nothing he can do to control this situation in this place. But he had a desire to see Christ. He had a desire to see Jesus. He was determined that he was going to figure a way to see Jesus. Just like that woman who with the issue of blood for 12 years, she had a desire. She wanted to touch the hem of his garment. Had spent all she had, the Bible says. Went to every doctor, everything she could. When everything ran out, all the riches, everything ran out, she determined. She said, I need to touch even the hem of his garment and he pressed through. Reminds me of the story of those men who cried out, son of David, the blind man, as they heard Jesus was coming through, they were determined to get his attention. Something was taking place. Why so anxious to see him, Zacchaeus? Why are you so anxious to hear about this? Why not just hear about him? Why not just what you hear about him? Why, what's the need? Why do you need to see him? Thousands saw him talking about Jesus. Thousands of people had seen Jesus. Thousands of people heard about it. Thousands of people formed their opinion on what others had to say about Jesus. Some didn't hold back in what they had to say about Jesus. You have some people like that, friends or family members, that don't care. They don't hold back their tongue. Their, their, their tongue. They're going to tell you how it is. They're going to be blunt about it. They're going to be ugly about it. Whatever their opinion is, whether good or bad, they're just going to say it. Well, they had so many opinions out there about Jesus. The scribes had an opinion. The Pharisees had an opinion. The rabbis had opinions. The poor man had opinion. The rich man had opinion. The Pharisees, all these people had opinions. The young, the old, everybody had an opinion of who Jesus was. He was called a devil by some. He was called a lunatic by some. He was called a, fa a, a fanatic. He was called a blasphemer. Some called him the son of God. Some called him the son of David. Some said he was a prophet. 
prophet. Some said he was an imposter. Some said he was a healer. And the list went on and on and on on what people had to say about this man named Jesus. Zacchaeus knew he couldn't trust their opinion. Zacchaeus knew he couldn't just go off a hearsay, but he needed to see Jesus for himself. He said, I need to see, I want to see Jesus, this man that they're talking about. Today, you may hear things like wonderful, counselor. You may hear Jehovah Jireh. You may hear he's my provider. He's my healer. He delivered. He's my deliverer. You may hear all these things, but you cannot be satisfied with just hearing these things. You have to determine and purpose in your heart, I want to see this Jesus. I want to see the provision of God. I want to see the hand of God. I want to see the law say. I don't just want to hear stories off a book or somebody else, a missionary. I want to see Jesus. We have to determine that in our mind. Zacchaeus said for himself, I want to see him. I don't care. I want to see Jesus. I want to see him. There was a desire there to see Jesus. The Bible says he wanted to see Jesus. You can, you can, you can. Today, you can determine to see whoever you want. You can determine to want to study about Buddha. You can determine to study about Allah or Muhammad or somebody else. You can determine to want to see Bill Gates and YouTube and all that stuff. And it seems like all that stuff becomes easy and accessible. But the minute you set your eyes on wanting to see Jesus, it appears that the devil begins to form a press against you. They begins to form a crowd against you or something against you to stop you from wanting to see Christ. You can, you can, you can go and you can study and you can do all these other things all these worldly things maybe not necessarily even bad things you'll have no problem but the minute you say I want to see Jesus watch how everything begins to turn against you watch how all of a sudden obstacles obstacles begin to form and you're too short or you're too little or you're not tall enough or you're not this enough or, or the way is blocked or this door closed you can't do this but we have to determine in our mind we're going to press on no matter what God made a way he's made a way for us to get to him hallelujah praise God he had determination he wanted to see him we also read that he climbed that sycamore tree he didn't waste time focusing on the little of stature that he was little of stature or he didn't waste time focusing on all the crowd or the press like the Bible says. He didn't waste time feeling sorry for himself in just a few moments he was defeated he was thinking oh man I can't, I'm, I'm literal of stature, the crowd's too big, I can't get through. So just for a minute or two, it seemed like he was defeated and he was desperate in a dilemma. He could not see Jesus, but the earnest seeker will not just sit back and just say, well, I guess it's over. I guess there's nothing I can do. I guess I'm going to pack up my, my bags and leave. He's not going to sit there and listen to the critics. They're going to say, dude, you better just go. You can't climb the tree or you can't do this. No, what did he do? He ran and he climbed the tree. And that's the title of the message for tonight. Run and climb. Run and climb that tree. As soon as you hear those critics, as soon as you hear that thing, as soon as you see the obstacles, you run, you take off, you climb that tree. You get up there and you say, Jesus, I want to see you. I want to see you through this situation. I want to see you through this dilemma, this pandemic, whatever it is. I don't have a job. I got laid off. Jesus, I want to see you. All these obstacles in my way, but I have to see you no matter what. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and he climbed the tree I know it's a basic I know it's an easy story but it's something that we have to do it's easier said than done he was willing to do whatever it took to see Jesus whatever it took to see Jesus you know what it is. What does it take for you to see Jesus? What do you have to do? You get along with him, whatever it is. I want to see Jesus. I want to see the hand of God. I want to see provision. A lot of people desire that, but it's not until all of a sudden they get pushed into that direction that they see what they're made of. Just like that song. A lot of people sing, take me deeper. A lot of people say, bring me where my faith can't, you know... Take me deeper, this and that. But all of a sudden, they get up there and they're deeper and they don't know what they're doing. Why? Because they don't know what they're asking. It's not going to be an easy road. It's not going to be an easy way out. It takes determination. It takes somebody that says, no matter what, 
I will go. No matter what. I know I'll have to suffer through some things. I know I'm going to have to be ridiculed. I know hell's going to come against me. I know the devil's going to rise up against me. But by the grace of God, I'm going to hold on to this plow. By the grace of God, I'm going to press on, move on, keep working, keep fighting. I know it's not going to be an easy road. I know I'm not signing up for the easy road. If it was the easy road, everybody would be signed up for it. But again, he ran and he climbed that tree. He wanted to see Jesus. And guess what? Jesus wanted to see him. It just wasn't that he wanted to see Jesus, but Jesus also wanted to see him. Jesus was thinking, he was already knowing Zacchaeus is going to be there. I want to see him. I want to spend time with him. Do you want to see Jesus? Is that your desire? Do you want to see Jesus in your situation, in your circumstance, in your home, in your family, in your job? Before Zacchaeus even thought about wanting to see Jesus, Jesus already had him on his mind. You think about that woman at the well. She had no idea that Jesus was coming her way, but he, she was already on his mind. Same thing with Zacchaeus. Before he woke up that morning and thought, you know what, I want to see Jesus. Jesus already knew. I'm going to come by this way. He's going to be up on that tree. I'm going to see him. I'm going to abide with him. I'm going to knock on his door just like the word says. I'm knocking. If you answer, I will come in and sup with you. Hallelujah. He didn't let Zacchaeus didn't let his circumstance affect his faith. He didn't let it discourage him. He didn't let other people in the way stop him from seeing Jesus, stop him from climbing that tree, no matter how silly he looked. I'm sure there were plenty of people there that wanted to see Christ. They wanted to see what this Jesus was all about, but they weren't willing to go to any length to see him. I'm sure a lot went away sad. I'm sure a lot went away upset and mad, thinking, man, my circumstances, nobody got out the way, nobody moved, nobody did this, nobody did that. They did not want to pay the price to see Christ. Christ did not want to pay the price to see Jesus. Why? The fear of being singled out. The fear of not appearing like everybody else. The fear of of what's going to happen. Maybe the Pharisees were standing there in one corner with their nice robes and their nice fine jewelry and the Sadducees and everybody standing in one corner, you know, not to impress, murmuring about Jesus. Maybe they had a couple of people there, a few people they wanted to see. But because of the fear of the religious, because of the fear of what they were going to do or say, these people are fanatic, these people are this, they didn't do what they could. I don't care what the religious have to say. I don't care what people have to say. I want to know Jesus. Jesus myself I want to know God I want to know God if there's a way to know him I want to find out how it is and I want to know him you have to be determined you have to be determined right now in this pandemic if you want to call it a pandemic whatever this is that we in I want to ask you a question what really matters right now what really matters what really matters to you that are watching to you that are hearing this what really matters Whether all this is fake news or not, we know that there are very real cases out there of people that are dying and being sick. We know that. We also know there's a lot of propaganda and then there's a lot of false things that are across. But I'm not here to debate that tonight. I'm here to ask what really matters. What can people really boast in? What can we really brag about? What can we really talk about? Because everything is shut down. Some things are opening here and there, but it's still not like it used to be. Our planes can't take us anywhere. Our money can't take us anywhere. Our money can't buy us out of a ventilator. What can be boasted in? Riches? Possessions? So we may have possessions. So we may have all these things. But nobody can come and enjoy. Nobody can come and see all these things. It can't buy joy. It can't buy hope. It can't buy peace. The Bible says about Zacchaeus that he was chief and he was rich. But it also says that he could not. So his riches didn't matter. It didn't matter his, his, that he was chief didn't matter because the Bible says he could not see Jesus. All this stuff did not matter. It wasn't his money that attracted Jesus. It wasn't his possession. It wasn't his prestige. It was his humility. It was his humility that attracted Jesus. He was rich with materials, but he was poor in spirit. And Jesus said, blesses is, blesses the poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom of heaven evidence by him talking about Zacchaeus giving away back all the material things 
repay him back up to fourfold if he had taken everything. That's letting me know that Zacchaeus is thinking about another kingdom. That lets me know that Zacchaeus is no longer worried about the materials. Zacchaeus is no longer worried about the possessions. But he now he's poor in spirit. He knows that he's trading in the field. He's trading for the greater, tre the greater treasure that's in there. And he knows. And he knows. But with all this being said. Many have found God like never before through this hard time that we've been going through. This hard time that you may be going through, are going through. They found God like never before. But it wasn't because they owned money or possessions or things. It, does, it wasn't because of that. It was because they had an open heart. Why? Because they desired to see Jesus. Why? Because their desire was, I want to see Jesus throughout all this. Oh, Jesus, I need you. I need you desperately, God. None of these things satisfy. None of these things mean a thing, God. I know the reason for living. The reason why I was created was to worship you. He went to see Jesus. And something even greater happened. Talking about Zacchaeus. Jesus saw him. He went to see Jesus. That's great. It's one thing to see him. It's one thing to see him. He don't even look at you. He doesn't even wave at you. You're over here screaming, Jesus, Jesus. And you saw him and you can say, oh, yeah, did you see Jesus? Yeah, I saw Jesus. He passed by. Did he look at you? No, he didn't look at me. He didn't wave. He didn't do anything. He just kept going. It's one thing to say that. But it's another thing when you don't even have to say a word. And he's already looking at you and calls you by name and says, come down. I have something to say. Come down. I'm coming to your place today. Praise God. Some of us just wanted to catch a glimpse and he said I've been waiting on you I've been waiting to see you you come down from there you've done all you could to see me you thought all you were going to get was just a glimpse just a better vantage but in your trial and your suffering and your in your persistence to see me to knock and to seek you found me now in your abode in your home praise God Jesus saw him maybe he went in there just not to try to draw too much attention to himself. You know, he, nobody could see him anyway. He was so short of statue. But he's over here climbing this tree, you know, trying to be inconspicuous in, 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 in where nobody can see a thing, thinking, you know, I don't want to draw attention to myself. I'm sure some people saw him. I'm sure people were laughing at him, snickering, saying all kind of stuff, bickering, saying, what are you doing? What are you doing, you weirdo? I'm sure a lot of people saw him. I'm sure some people didn't even know he was there. I'm sure some people were surprised, didn't even know that this man had climbed a tree. There's something out there that happened. He was doing this. But when Jesus called him, everybody was shocked. Even those that saw him climb the tree, but even those that didn't see him climb the tree, as they turned their heads and all of a sudden they say, hey, I never knew he was up there. When did he get up there? Everybody was shocked when Christ made it known to the public, hey, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house. Hastily, come down. I'm going to your house. There's no greater validation than the validation that God gives you. You pray in secret, you fast in secret, you seek God in secret. It's conspicuous, you know, you let the religious and the crowd do what they want to do. But you say, I want to see Jesus in a personal way. And you know that the Bible says you do it in secret, but God will reward you openly. God made this a public scene. Maybe Zacchaeus didn't want to be seen. Maybe Zacchaeus didn't want to be seen by anybody. But Jesus said, he saw his determination and he said, hey, Zacchaeus, for everybody to see I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. He will bless his people openly. He will always bless his people like that. Openly. When the people are sincere. The transaction that took place. The change that took place was not a private thing. It was a public thing. Many saw what took place. And it was recorded in the word of God. For ages and generations to come. We know that the word of God. It says that heaven and earth shall pass away. But his eternal word will stand. And forever that story of Zacchaeus will be inscribed in the pages of God why because he made it public he wanted it to be a public thing he wanted the world to see what happens how he rewards those that diligently seek him not out of some um, out of a pure heart not just to show off or to try to be something or somebody but out of a pure heart 
Many saw the changes that took place in my life when I got saved. The changes that took place in my life when I came back from Central America. After I let God have his way in my life, I went back to the church. I went back to where I came from. Many, many took notice that I was different. My own family began to take notice. Something was different about me. You fast forward years now to, to now after trials and tribulations still they, 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 they do something in you. They change you. I know brothers and sisters that I hadn't seen in years. And next thing you know, I see them and I know a change has taken place in their life. Something's different about them. Why? Because God is making that change evident and open. The change that was taking place in secret, God all of a sudden is making it open. You praise like you never praise. You worship like you never worship. You're preaching like you've never preached before. Your testimony with authority like never before. Why? A change has taken place openly and everyone can see it. Everybody can see what God has done in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He called Zacchaeus from darkness to light. He called him from darkness to light. He might have went out there a cheater, a liar, and a stealer. He might have went out there doing all those things. But when God was done with him, he was a changed man. He was a different man. And it was evidenced by his actions. It was evidenced by what everybody saw that he wasn't the same Zacchaeus. Called him from darkness to light. The word of God says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light and in him, talking about God, is no darkness at all. That means that light is clear. Light is pure. Light is transparent. Light is honesty. Light is openness. Light doesn't hide anything. Light doesn't present half the truth. Light presents the whole truth. Light will not deceive. Light will not cover up. Light is open. And that's what Christ is. And in him is no darkness at all. He is light. And the cross comes to remove. The cross of Christ comes to remove everything that belongs to that kingdom of darkness. You can look at that tree. You can look in that sycamore tree. That's a key is climb. And you can compare it spiritually to that cross. Taking up your cross. Going up to that cross. Despised of men. Going to that cross. That some people have shame to go around and mess with the cross. But you can look at going to that cross. The cross finds out how much worldliness is in our hearts. And it brings it to light. It will find out how much selfishness there is about us. It will demand a setting aside and a crucifying of all that is self. Self-pity, self-interest, self-consideration. Just like Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus had to give it all up. And he did willfully. Once that light shone in his life, he knew I was all about self, self pity, self interest. I was all about me, all about me. It's always about me. What I'm going through, what I'm struggling, what I, you got to hear what I got to say. When all of a sudden the light of Christ came, he forgot about all that and he says, I'm giving it all away. Zacchaeus was in an uncomfortable place. He was in a place where he was, some people, are afraid of heights, terrified of heights. They can't stand heights. I don't know if he was such a man, but if he was, that, that even adds more to his determination to see Christ. But he was short in stature, didn't have long legs. I've seen that sycamore tree. You can go and you can, you can Google that tree, what it looked like, what they say is a Zacchaeus tree. It looks pretty tall. Not sure how he figured out a way to get up there, but he got up there. But you think about it, he's up there, he, he's uncomfortable, he's holding on, maybe the, maybe the bark was rough, rubbing up against his legs, his knees, whatever, he's holding on, I don't know how high he was, but he was high enough to see over the crowd, and he's hanging on, and he's wondering, maybe minutes and seconds are, are, are taking an eternity to pass by, and he's wondering, will I be able to hold on to this until Jesus comes, and he's wondering, where is he at? Maybe by now he would have showed up. Maybe he would have been here by now, but he's not here. Should I just get down? Should I just forget it? Should I just turn away? Is he still coming? Is it really worth it to go through all this pain just to see Jesus? Is it really worth it to go through this humiliation just to see Jesus? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it just to catch a glimpse of who Jesus is? To go through all this? Listen, it has always been. By way of the fellowship of his sufferings that others' hearts have been touched. 
Other people, I'm not talking about yours. Yes, ours gets changed, obviously, but the hearts and in in, in, in others are touched. The Holy Spirit works on others' lives through your suffering with the Lord. And he takes us there for that very purpose. Why? Because not only is God doing something in us, but through that doing something in us, he's going to do something to somebody else's life by that suffering. It's not just suffering just to suffer. It's not just doing that just, just because it, he just takes pleasure in doing that. It's for a greater purpose. It's for a greater purpose that these things are taking place. So you will see him like never before. And those around you will begin to see him like never before. That's why we say it'll cost. It'll cost you. It'll cost you to know Christ. There's a song that says, for whatever it takes to be more like you. Sunshine for rain. Comfort for pain. That's what I'll be willing to do. It's a great song. It's a great song to sing until you really mean it. When you really mean it, things begin to happen. When you really mean it, suffering begins to take place. I remember not to put a feather on my cap, not to do anything. But I remember hearing that song time and time again, time and time again, just in church growing up. But it wasn't until I dedicated my life to Christ that that song began to mean something to me. I remember being in that room, all locked up, all by myself, not married, no kids, far from thinking about marriage or anything, far from thinking about preaching, just giving in my life to Christ just thinking God do what you will I remember singing that song crying uh, just weeping over that song because I knew this road wasn't going to be an easy road I knew there were going to be rough things and I'm not saying I've been through all the rough waters I know there'll be more rough seas ahead but I knew that I was going to hold on to his hand and he was going to hold on to me and by his grace and mercy I we, we will make it through we are going to make it through some of you may be in that very place right now and I'm about to come to a close some of you may be in that very place right now you have fought and you have fought and your desire has been to see Jesus but it appears that nothing has gone right because it appears that the press and the crowd and this and that, so many circumstances, maybe even out of your control are taking place in your life right now. But I'm going to ask you, have you ran and climbed that tree yet? Have you tried that yet? Have you not worried about who's watching, who's not watching, what they're going to say and just say, I don't care. I'm going to run and I'm going to climb that tree because I want to see Jesus. Have you really got desperate enough that you want to know God at all costs? Have you really got desperate enough to say, God, OK, you've brought me to this place. Now, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? A person may study and they may read their Bible because their brain is just hungry for that knowledge. Their brain is just hungry to know more and study more. But a person that's going to pray is going to pray because their soul is hungry for God. I'm hungry for you, God. Not just knowledge, not just to know these things, but I'm hungry to know you. I'm hungry to see you, to be with you. The Bible says that Jesus came, came by and he looked up and he calls the keys by name. And told him to come down because he was coming to his house. Oh yeah, all those people murmured. All the Pharisees, all the religious began to murmur and began to say, you know, hey, you know, well, what's he doing going to this guy's house? Doesn't he know who he is? That didn't let Zacchaeus bother him. That didn't bother Jesus. That didn't bother Jesus one bit. He didn't stop in his tracks and, and say, oh, it, it, you know, uh, I didn't know what kind of guy this was. No. So why should we let the opinions of others affect us from seeing Jesus? Why should I let the way somebody else worships affect me? Why should I let the way somebody else does something affect me? No, I want to see Jesus. No, I want to do whatever it takes to see Christ. Same thing goes for everyone tonight. He knows us by name. He sees you. He sees me. He knows where we are. And he's calling by name. He's saying, I see you. I see where you are. I see that your desire is to know me. I see that your desire is to see me like never before. And I've brought you to this place. I've brought you to this Jordan so you can see me like never before. Now come down and let and rest in my rest that's what the lord says we can make it through this can be a testimony of the grace and the mercy of god for the glory of christ how we can 
boast about now, not spiritual push-ups, not boast about how much we've prayed and done, but boast about the fact that he knows me. Boast about the fact that look what he brought me through. This is where I was. I was lost. I was this. I, I was broken. I was shattered. I was I, I, I was beat up. I didn't know what to do. I, I was in my, in my wit's end. I didn't know what to do, but all of a sudden Christ came in, and I glory and I boast about that fact. Praise the Lord. I hope this word has been encouragement to you to know that you can run and climb that tree. Who can boast today? Who can brag today? Only those that can say, Jesus knows where I'm at. And I'm not talking about some shameful brag, you know, I don't pray like you pray and this and that. I'm talking about the fact that he knows where I'm at today. The King of kings and Lord of lords, he sees my situation. He's heard my cry and he's coming my way. He's coming your way today. Amen. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer and I hope that this word takes root in your heart to know that you can run and climb that tree if you haven't already and let God have his way in your life. Father, we thank you, Lord, today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for, for what you're doing in our hearts and our lives, even though sometimes we may not understand, even though sometimes all we feel is pain and all we see is suffering, God, and we may not understand the waters that you're bringing us through. I pray today that you would just continue to hold us up by your grace and your mercy, continue to sustain us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to know you in this time, in this day and age. I pray today that our testimony may encourage those around us, God, to want to know you, Lord, not just to hear what, what we have to say, but to have a desire to say, I want to see Jesus for myself, and I want to do all I can to see Christ. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to be with us, Lord, as we go our separate ways throughout the remainder of this week. Bring us back safely, Lord, should you tell him. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to encourage you to tune in Wednesday, 630. We will be going live again as we will be bringing the word uh, of the Lord for this day. Amen. God bless and good. hopefully everybody has a good week. Amen.